Hey, what's up, Hip Hop TV? As we have been waiting for, Redman and Method Man are here in Australia doing their tour that's been long awaited. But now, right now, I'm here joined with Redman, one half of Redman and Method Man. How you doing, man? I'm good. How Straight you doing? I'm very good. Yeah. It's pretty hot out here. Absolutely. Indeed. Absolutely. Now, um, actually, I want to take you back to when you were young before I you know, get into the whole music thing. And I just want to ask, like, what were the messages as a, as a young kid that you were telling yourself that self confidence, that self-talk that you know to this day kind of molded you into who you are? Oh, okay. Uh, I can give you two answers. I don't like waking up early and I don't like taking orders. I don't like uh, waking up early and taking orders. You know, when you wake up early, then you got to go to a job and take orders from a boss who's a pain in the ass. I couldn't do it. So I had to be my own boss and make my own money and make my own time. <laughs> With all your uniqueness, all your character, you guys, you know, are way up there and people respect that. But at the same time, you guys are able to be down to earth. You guys are able to be set apart from the rest because you are so humble with what you guys do. And do you think that is music that's made you learn that in time? Or do you think that was always you? Uh, that was always... Yeah, it was always us, really. Like, you know, like, we know we stars, but, you know, you got a lot of stars out here that's assholes, you know, and we the kind of guys that approach people with a nice you know, personality and who we are, and we end up hearing about other people. You know, when you be nice to, you know, when you be nice to people, you hear about assholes. <laughs> Yeah, always fans can be assholes too, but you know, we always straighten them out before they start being assholes anyway. So once we straighten them out and they get the level of where we at, they be like, all right, y'all guys are cool. And that's how we gotta be, because we go a lot of places and we be a lot of dirty places where niggas don't be. Yes, sir. And we still in the hood, right, nigga? Yes, sir. First of all, our fans is different. You know, me and Red and Meth fans are smokers. We got a cult following. Um, we could go. We don't even have to drop an album, and we could go on tour. That's a following. When you can not even have an album in five years and still be getting shows like you had an album out. And our fans are like smokers. Like some of them, he said, like be assholes, but most of them be just straight wanting us to taste bud and and smoke bud or ask us questions. And when you got high fans like that, it ain't no. Yeah. Ain't too, yeah, it ain't too much. Ah, ah, it's like, man, yeah, it's mellow. So our fans are kind of different. Yeah, what, what's the message that you're able to take home and put in your music? Wash that... your hands after you take a shit. That's the message. <laughs> That's a good message. What was the question? The message that you put in your songs. We just have good times, good vibes. The Ritter, the Jitter. The Ritter, the Jitter. The Ritter, the Jitter. Right. Our, show, our shows is off the hook. When they see our show, all the smoking and all that just go out the window. They be like, yo, them dudes are here. Well, you're a bit of a studio genius, and by that I mean you not only take control of the mic, you also have a bit of experience um, in engineering, yeah. And that's purely from you getting behind the decks and, you know, doing your thing and trying to learn as you go. Do you think that's purely just from the production process, or did you expect, you know, all those years ago to be in this position now and to know as much as you do? Well, it's like you got to, all these years, you got to force yourself to learn more. Because it's like each year that we grow, it's like I cut, I know each year that I grow, I try to cut the middleman out of whatever I'm doing. Everybody got a middleman in their life where they got to do this and do that, pay this man to do this. 
Well, I, I wanted to cut the, you know, the engineering out too much and the mixing out because it was costing us money just sitting in there being creative. Now we could go in there and be creative and not have to pay no more. So I had to learn that to save dollars. <laughs> I think my question would now be, is how do you put the concept of quality into your music? So I know what he's capable of as far as his writing skills. I know what I'm capable of as far as my writing skills. And this ain't like, you know, the NBA where your skills tend to uh, fall back a little because of wear and tear on your knees or your ankles or whatever, whatever. You know, this right here, this is all about mental. And uh, I think the more life experience you got, the more you got to write about. So I mean, it just, it just goes on and on and on. How long you want to do it? Um, when you guys actually approach these these projects, you guys already know that you guys are veterans of hip hop, and the people out there. That they're looking forward to hearing this feel-good shit. Like they haven't heard this stuff in so long, so they're relying on you. Like, how do you guys deal with the pressure of that? Yes. Because, uh, especially when fans feel like you know you've been out in the game for a while, they start to feel like they know you and they expect certain things from you. It's like, I, I mean, sometimes you don't want to just do the boom boom bat beat. Sometimes you want to go outside your realm and try something new. I'm not gonna say a lot of times, but there are a few times where fans are trying, you know, basically castrate you for doing stuff like that. You know, they're really hard on the veterans. Harder on the veterans than they are on the new guys because they don't know what to expect from them. I'm to the point where I don't even give a fuck what they think no more. I'm gonna just do me and make music because you know what? I done did the boom back. I done did the hardcore to keep it real shit, and that shit just kept me broke. So now I'm gonna I'm just do what I know, and I always wanted to do worldly music. I didn't want to do just around the way to try state boom bap music. I wanted to do music that I'll be heard over here, hold over in India somewhere, heard all over the world. So, you know, that's what I'm doing now. I think um, just from, you know, because we stay around um, real grounded people. I know his family's real grounded, my family real grounded. I think that plays a major part in it because we don't got a lot of ass kissery going on, you know what I mean? And when you ain't got a lot of ass kissery going on, you got people around you that ain't afraid to tell you, like, look, nigga, you said some bullshit. It, it, it kind of, you know, puts things in, yeah, it puts things in, it puts things in the perspective, you know what I'm saying? We got niggas that wait for us to say some wrong shit so they correct us. Yeah, don't get us wrong. Only our niggas could do that. Somebody in the street to get their ass whooped. You guys really represent hip hop culture, and that's something that's not ever going to change. You guys are written in the history books, right up there. You are in the history book. Wow, what are you doing with your eyes? I think, I think <laughs> once you, I think when you're a freshman in it, and 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 and, and once people believe in your movement and, and what you're doing, I mean, you got. Honestly, in the hip hop game, you got five years after that. If you come out with another hit after that, you got five more years. You know what I'm saying? Come out with another hit after that. See, what we did was Red had his first hit album. I had my first hit album. Five more years. Then we did the joint together, the Rockwiler. Five more years. The movie. Five more years. It's just it just keeps going on and on and on and on. And when you got that type of uh, 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 thing going on with it when you know there are people listening it kind of makes it easier but hard at the same time because you know like you don't want to just drop some bullshit because they're going to see it for what it is especially if they think in the way you think especially if they've been riding with you for 10 15 years they they pretty much know what to expect from you you know let's get it let's get it let's get it hey yo let me say this before we go any further with the show, um, this is my second time back out here in Australia. Yeah. And I just want to say that every part of Australia that we went to been blowing the fucking roof off.